Good morning and, and Happy New Year, everyone. This is our first uh, webinar Wednesday of the new year, obviously, here. This morning, we're going to focus on uh, Sage Intelligence, which is uh, a powerful reporting tool. I was looking at the list, and I see we have some clients on that, that are already using Sage Intelligence, uh, some that uh, we've talked to about it, and some that may kind of be uh, hearing about it or looking at it uh, you know, for the first time this morning. So with us this morning is Sandra Smith. Uh, she is the product specialist for Sage Intelligence at Sage. And to say that our team has learned an absolute ton about Sage Intelligence from her uh, is, is, actually, is an understatement. <laughs> We've worked with her for many years to learn and, and master this product. And uh, um, this morning, she's going to take us through, you know, the different options, the different components of, of Sage Intelligence, uh, you know, and then certainly at the end, uh, answer any questions that uh, anyone has on the line. And just a reminder that all of the attendees are, are in listen-only mode on this webinar, but the chat uh, will be monitoring that. So certainly if you have a question, please feel free to post it in the chat and uh, we'll get to answering it as soon as possible. So with that, I'll hand it, hand it over to Sandra and uh, over to you. Great, thank you very much. Hi everyone. Yes, I am the Sage Intelligence Product Specialist, Sandra Smith is my name. So I'll be um, talking about how you can discover the power of Sage 300 reporting with Sage Intelligence by controlling your data, improving your reporting, using the flexibility, the Excel-based reports of Sage Intelligence. All right, now I do wanna go over the agenda. So just so you know what's coming up, first of all, I'm gonna talk about a comparison between Financial Reporter and Sage Intelligence. Then I'm gonna go into the benefits, the uh, features of Sage Intelligence, how you can control your data with that flexibility and the collaboration of Sage Intelligence. I'm gonna talk specifically about financials first, but there's a lot more reporting there for you. So I'm gonna walk through the library of our reports. We're gonna take a look at those reports and wrap up with some helpful learning resources for you that's available right at your fingertips. All right. So Sandra? I, yes. There was just a couple uh, messages that they were having a little bit trouble hearing you. Oh, okay. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay, so. I wonder um, if I should turn it, should I turn it up? The volume? I'm not sure. Give that a try. Oh, it's much better, they're saying. Okay. Oh, it's much, okay, good, 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 good. All right, well, thank you. Yes, I appreciate you um, uh, letting me know. Okay. okay, thank you. So we're starting with the comparison of 300 financial reporting and Sage Intelligence. So, First of all, Sage Intelligence reports on financial data as well as operational information such as sales, inventory, purchasing, customer information. All kinds of other databases can be reported on as well because we do have the ability to connect to all of the Sage 300 modules, the databases, the information that you're working with every day, but also with modules outside of Sage 300. And there's dashboards that you can customize the reports. So you can really look at your business across the whole and um, entire, across your whole entire business, not just one certain area. With Financial Reporter, it's part of the Sage 300 general ledger, so it's really limited just to the financial reporting. Now, Sage Intelligence works with Excel, and it runs both the 32 and 64-bit, um, which, of course, Microsoft Office, as well as um, the operating systems from Microsoft support 32 and 64-bit, so, uh, so does Sage Intelligence. And Financial Reporter works only with 32-bit Excel, so something to um, you know, keep in mind when you're, when you're thinking about the differences there. Now, Sage Intelligence is also based on .NET Framework 4, which is supported much better. <laughs> and um, you won't have to go back and install old versions and, and get hung up in that area. Now, one thing that, <clears throat> excuse me, one thing that Sage Intelligence does is when it runs a report, it's loading its data into its memory. So this is Sage Intelligence development. What happens is all of the memory is loaded so that the report can run out much faster. All right. Financial Reporter, though, takes a little bit of time to run each report. 
So these are the differences in the two, but hey, uh, stay tuned because there's a lot more information coming your way. Now, I want to start with a question because I want you to think about this. What reports do you use for your business decisions? And I mean any of those decisions that you need to make throughout your day. And not just you, but a lot of your other employees, right? What, what decisions do they have to make? Now, are you using reports like, of course, income statement, balance sheet, trial balance, sales reports? Are you using sales reports or anything else, any other reports that you're using to make decisions? What we have found from uh, lots of research, there's several common reporting challenges. Informations are based on inaccurate <clears throat> data. What that means is people have information that they need in their systems across their business to make decisions within their business. How many salespeople do I need to hire? Or what, what, what do I need to do to change my inventory or my purchasing area? Or what kind of you know, cash flow do I have? And of course, these are quite obvious questions, but what about all the questions behind that? Information is not available for people. That means that the data within your systems is there, but it might take a long time to prepare a report, to gather the data, to review, make sure the data is accurate. It's fragmented, it's distributed, your data is everywhere. There really is a clear need for decision-making support, and that means getting that information from your data within your systems. That's where Sage Intelligence comes in. We provide you what you need, when you need it, where you need it. Meaning, so let's, let's take a look at that. What do you need? You need uh, to gather that information and you need it presented in a way that someone can understand it. With Sage Intelligence, it's very flexible. So you can use the, the um, reports that we have or design your own. You can customize off of what we've done, but you can get that information from all sources of data. Sage 300, of course, your financials, your sales, uh, but there's additional ways of getting that information and getting it in front of you in a report that you need, plus out to others that need it. Distribute, auto-distribute, it. Send it to anyone, anytime. Send it to groups, individuals, inside and outside your company, but you can control this. And also, of course, where you need it. Do you need it via an email on a server globally? So it's information that you can uh, present to people within your company uh, and and if so, outside of your company, you can control that information and you can design it the way you need to see it. All right, so let's dig into Sage 300 intelligence reporting, starting with the report manager. Now, whether you've heard us say this before or not, but we reduce that spreadsheet chaos. What does that mean? I'm sure you're thinking, I don't know what that means. Um, maybe one person has a spreadsheet of some information, probably financial, you know, on their desktop. Somebody else has the same uh, report, if you will, or that spreadsheet on another desk, uh, on their desktop. And then they're emailing versions. Oh, wait a minute. This is the right, wait a minute. This is the right version. Report manager reduces all of that. What report manager is, is the interface by which the person who's responsible for managing the reports will run all the reports out. So they can run reports, they can customize existing reports, they manage the report properties, they can create the reports. All the reports are stored here, and all of the reports um, are run from this interface. You can have more than one person, right? But this is where uh, all of the reports are controlled. Now there's another module, and the module we call the report viewer. Think of this as a list of uh, reports those that are made available to the report viewer user who can run any of the reports. They can view the existing reports, they can drill down, but the, all the properties are controlled by the report manager. Meaning if that person makes any changes when it runs to Microsoft Excel, they would save it to their desktop. 
that's the only way they can do that. And that renders that report <clears throat> useless for the future. Any additional data that's added to that report from the system can't be accessed. All the reports are run from report manager or report viewer with the latest information, and they're all run out to Microsoft Excel. This gives you the single report version that's saved to report manager, but access to those who need it. So let's take a look at some of these reports. <clears throat> Excuse me, and the ability to customize. So all of the reports run out into Microsoft Excel, every one of them. It's familiar with you, right? Nine out of 10 people are very, are familiar at least with Microsoft Excel and there's a lot of people, especially I'm sure everyone on this uh, call is familiar and comfortable with Microsoft Excel. If you happen to not be, don't worry, there's options. There's lots of options and there's lots of training uh, with tips and tricks and so forth on Microsoft Excel. But the biggest point I'd like you to understand is the fact that you can customize, you can change any of these reports. I'm showing you reports here, this first one, which is our financial report designer for all your financials. It can be modified and it can be modified through that task pane to the right. All right, so you see right now the, the layouts list, but that's uh, the task pane that allows you to modify the report the way you need to see it. The other way is the pivot table field list. And that's where you can add um, fields or uh, change what the look of the report. And this is just scratching the surface. You can use Microsoft Excel to its 100% capability in making changes. You can add formulas, you can add graphics, so forth. And I'll show you some reports that we've done where you can see how we've taken advantage of Microsoft Excel. So customizing any of the reports using Microsoft Excel is one, is one big feature. Another is improving collaboration within your business by using the, the distribution feature. Sage Intelligence allows you to send any of the reports as a PDF, as an X, Excel uh, report, or as an H, sorry, HTML report. <clears throat> you can, of course, send to a file. You can send, of course, by email uh, to a group. You can auto-distribute all kinds of different ways to get that information out to your team. So inventory, if you carry inventory, there's a warehouse manager. Send reports to uh, your warehouse manage, manager. Maybe individual sheets to individual warehouse managers across the country or across the globe. That can be done. Sales, say, send those to your sales managers or your sales people so they know what's, what's really going on or your product, your purchasing. Uh, send them out and um, give those people within your company the ability to, to make decisions within their jobs so they can see the information within your systems. Reporting from multiple sources. Now that's a little more advanced. Of course, Acumen is there to help you with all of this. This might be something they, they would most likely uh, need to help you with. However, this is such a huge benefit, especially over uh, any of the other <clears throat> reporting um, applications available for you. And that is the fact that you can report from additional modules within 300. So any of the information you're working on at day to day, there can be reports that can be created that present information on modules throughout your 300 system, but also outside of your 300 system. Uh, and maybe it's a, a Sage product or a, um, <clears throat> like Sage CRM, an additional uh, vendored product, or maybe it's just an Excel spreadsheet. Maybe you're using Excel as a as a database to store information, so uh, dumb social media to, or whatever it is that you need. Make that connection and report off of it. Maybe it's another application, completely different. It's within your company. You can make a connection to that um, and make create reports from it. So you can really holistically see your business and make decisions on what's going on within your uh, company. So if there's nothing else you can remember uh, once you get, um, maybe tomorrow or tonight when you're thinking about this, you can view your data in existing pre-built reports and layouts within Microsoft Excel from Sage Intelligence, and that means pre-built reports and layouts that, that we've built, Sage Intelligence has uh, built, 
or you can customize and design your own. Now we give you the tools, Acumen gives you the training and tools to do a lot of this on your own. However, don't worry, it's something that Acumen is trained in and understands and can help you with this, all of this as well. Now let's start talking reports. These are the list of, this is the list of the standard reports that comes with Report Manager. Remember, Report Manager is that interface by which you manage all your reports, by which all the reports are run from, and you can manage the properties too. Well, within that Report Manager, you have all of these. That's a couple dashboards, financial trend analysis, GL transaction details, sales reports, inventory, purchase. Now the designer, uh, it's the report designer, the financial report designer, Designer. It does require the designer module. We'll talk about that in a minute. But look at all the reports that come available with that report designer. A balance sheet, forecasting, income statement, ratio, lots of reports that we built uh, to that re financial report designer. And of course, these can be altered to meet your business needs as needed, as necessary. So quite a list of uh, initial standard reports that come with report um, report manager. So let's talk a little bit about designing financials. Hmm, maybe there's some things that you've always wanted to do and see from your financial reports. Well, Sage Intelligence allows you to do that. The financial report designer, we call it a module. It is a report within uh, the report manager that you run from report manager that opens up and looks like this but it has a lot of additional development within it that allows you to view your uh, information at levels, the account level, the group, uh, account group type and category. What you do is you'll drag in your uh, formulas, your lists, you'll set your formulas up. You can use Excel for additional formulas, additional calculations, V lookups, whatever uh, you need. And you can see to the right that task pane. That's where you'll drag your lists in and uh, you can manage your tree views and, and uh, really customize your report to look the way you need it. Now, if you look on the right-hand side, I, I've changed the view so that, and made a little bit better, so you can see now the list. So this is an example of the list that you would drag in. Accounts, you get, you've got your groups, budgets, et cetera. Lots of formulas for all of your financial needs, opening and closing balances. Again, this is when you're designing or changing or customizing a report. Remember, we've created reports that you can run out today, but Acumen can help you with this, or if it's something that you wanna train on yourself, to do, you can design it using that. The, here's the reporting trees that you can drag in and see the values change dynamically uh, as you drag in each uh, cat um, category or each uh, tree branch, if you will. And then tools for seeing your missing accounts and ranges. So you can, if there's any accounts that are added, you can dynamically update it so that you can uh, see those accounts uh, being added. So that is the report designer. Uh, with the report designer report, you also have the ability to drill down. So again, that's where any of your um, management, anyone who's viewing your financial reports have the ability to simply right click, click on that drill down at the very bottom of the right click, click on any value. And first of all, they'll see the account level. It's in a full sheet within uh, Microsoft Excel, but this is just a picture of the actual data within that sheet. But it opens up a new sheet with your account level and then all of your transaction uh, within that account. So you can drill down and see what's going on right from the report. Okay, and that could be done uh, from a report run out from report manager or report viewer. I do want to say though that if you email this report to someone or they pick it off of a file uh, server, they're viewing it off a file server, they won't be able to drill down. But remember that's to control your information. You don't want just everyone seeing that uh, sensitive supporting data. Okay. 
Now, if you're looking at the financial report designer and think, wow, I'd like to know more, we have the Sage 300 Intelligence Reporting Report Designer User Guide. So this is, I'm just reminding those of you on the call who use Sage Intelligence. If you've not used the designer before, you want to learn more, we do have available for you to um, available for you to download and get more information on. I'm going to show you the site uh, towards the end as well. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now let's talk about additional reporting options. So what I'm going to do here is uh, just go through a lot of the reports that are available. I'm going to show some in the, in the uh, presentation as well, but there's quite a few. So um, in lieu of time, I have a few, quite a few on the screen as well. So this is a, uh, first of all, an example of a financial layout. Remember, I'll say reports and layouts. The layouts are just different ways of, of course, seeing your financial data within one report. And this is the trial balance that we have available right within uh, our financial reports. You can see how we have year over year, the variance. And I'll point out, these are uh, what we call parameters where you can alter them. So if you want to change the currency, currency type, the period, the values will, uh, the values will change. Here's an income statement. Again, year over year, current month, year to date, there's the parameters at the top. Of course, you don't have to have parameters at the top. It, it can be, they can be put anywhere. This is just we've, what we've built uh, for you to view. And in a lot of cases, we have um, on the side, I don't show in the picture, but the uh, grouping of the supporting data below it. All of the supporting data, of course, is within um, sheets within the report. So it's, it's all there. Statement of cash flows. So here's where we're including uh, graphics. So you can see really what's going on from a, a visual standpoint within your business, your cash flow current versus, uh, versus prior. And then here's our regional summary. So this is just one of them. We have several, but this is where we're really taking advantage of the reporting trees, where we've set them up already. <laughs> uh, column by column. So we've divided them between the commercial and retail, so maybe two different uh, divisions, and within each division, maybe you have um, it regionally set up this way. This could be, of course, by product, uh, by people, how, you know, de or department, however you have your account segments set up. We can either, you can use it according to what we've done here, or uh, you could just use the tree to drag it into to a parameter uh, spot and change the numbers dynamically um, uh, right away. And we also have additional reports. And some of these reports are going to be are going to come from the report utility, which I'll talk about in just a minute from our website. And uh, this one, uh, well, wait a minute. I think this one's on in within uh, report manager. So this is the income statement forecast. So you can see where we set it up. So that you can see we happen to have it by group, but you can see your actual year over year and your projected. So um, like a, a, a forecast, it's not a forecast engine, it's a forecast report, just something that we've built. You can uh, go in and take a look and see how this could help your business as well. So the balance sheet forecast, we have income statement, balance sheet forecast, ratio report, so lots of um, information uh, from a ratio perspective. And I've got this report to show as well to demonstrate, but this is uh, where you can see your uh, gross profit, your net income, total assets, et cetera, and uh, all of the um, metrics at the top, key metrics, but these can be changed. So know that you can list whichever you want to see. We have, we have quite a few available for you. And then charts, and you can change what the chart uh, looks like. Maybe change it per person. Maybe you have one person in finance wants to see, you know, certain charts. Others want to see something else. So, all of this is uh, uh, customizable, if you will. Here's a sales report. So now you can see your customer, your item code, the quantity, total cost, and if there's things here you don't necessarily want to see, or something in addition to this, that can be changed. Uh, it can be changed up through that pivot table I showed earlier in an, in an earlier slide, just add a different um, 
add a different um, uh, column to the report to display something else. Sales Master AR, so all of your sales information from your accounts receivable module. You can see the time period. You can see different ways of uh, filtering. So the filtering at the top here, and of course all of the same, same or similar information um, in this report. And our, also our, our dashboard. So this is uh, one of our dashboards. It's available where you can see even um, information that that is um, talking to you. 17 com customers were invoiced during this period. You can see your total uh, sales, your daily sales. You can select which day you want to see it on, your average high and low for your certain, we call it state sales here, but this can be something specific to you, to your sales reps. One view of a lot of information that can really help your sales team make decisions and what's going on with their uh, portion of the business. Purchasing, here's our purchase report, inventory. Remember, if you have, if you carry inventory, you have warehouse people that need to see this information, you can distribute this to them. And um, uh, so they have this information at their fingertips. All right, I mentioned the report utility earlier, and that is uh, found at sageintelligence.com. You can see right on our website uh, sections of reports. So you have to open each of these, and then you can see <clears throat> each of the individual reports that are, are available. This is like our uh, sales flash report. You can see a description, you can download it. I, I don't recommend downloading them all like this shows. <laughs> so just select. I mean, you can, it just might take, um, you know, two or three minutes, but uh, you can download individual reports, just reports, of course, that you see. So this is the PJC report or project job and cost reports. If you don't use that module, I wouldn't uh, download that one. It's going to run uh, based on modules and information you're using within your system. Lots of reports available to you. Here's just a short list and, and a couple examples. Uh, so your sales analysis by rep, your accounts payable by transaction. That's that uh, project and job cost summary report. There's a few other uh, others of those. So quite a few reports. And we're using PowerView, which is a tw uh, an Excel 2013 feature. So it's been around, but it's something that really um, can show you in a nice graphical method for uh, the information. Pictures a thousand words, right? So let's first of all talk about uh, the components before we go into the system. <clears throat> so I talked about the report manager. The report manager on the far left, that is per workstation license. You get one license free with your installation. So if you have one person that's going to be managing the reports, you're covered. Anybody else, you'll need a, to purchase an additional license. And it needs to be activated, but that's something that Acumen can help you with very um, uh, easily, can uh, reach out to you and help you as you need to activate that report manager. And that's where all your reports are, of course, are run from to Excel. Report viewer, we talked about that one as well. Again, report viewer, it's a per workstation license, but that's where um, that user cannot edit and save reports to, as a report manager user can. The report designer, that's that financial reports module. That's the, it's a module, but it's also found within report manager. When you activate it, it appears as a report in report manager, and that's where you have that task pane and the ability to uh, design your financial reports. Now the connector is where, is a module that you'd need for uh, consolidated reports, but also if you want to add additional sources. And it is a site license as the report designer is, and it's available to those with permissions. It's much more advanced, so talk with Acumen about that module. And again, that's to connect to additional databases to create reports off of additional sources. Okay, let's take a look. Um, let's go in, and I'm gonna have to wake up my image here because it's been a while. So, um, 
maybe be thinking about what we've uh, talked about so far and any questions that are coming up. We'll talk about those, I think, at the end. All right, <laughs> almost. Okay, so this is report manager. That interface that you, the person that's managing reports would run all of the reports from. You can see all of our folders. Our consolidated folders are there only for those of you who have more than one company. Everyone will have uh, dashboards, demo reports. We have our designer. There's those, that designer uh, folder with all of our report designer um, reports that come available. Remember I mentioned the balance sheet, the income statement, your forecasting and ratio reports that come with report manager. Again, your inventory, you have your purchases and sales, and you see a couple others. I have my reports, actually a couple of my reports. I created uh, additional folders, and we have this new reports folder. And this folder is created when you download your first report utility. So those extra, those additional reports that are available from our website where you can download them and run them out. I have a few of these already run out. Let's take a look at the report designer. What I've done is I've made a copy and I show you this only to let you know that um, all of our reports here are uh, locked only so for you, so that you can go back and, and um, you know, start from how the report is in its initial view because you can change any of these reports. It's so easy to make a copy, but you make a copy of that, it opens up your properties that you can manage, properties like maybe adding a filter, maybe adding a, uh, a parameter that a that, uh, user that runs a report would have to enter that filters the data. Uh, maybe in the property you want to make it so that someone can see something or not see something. Those are, that's what I mean by managing the properties here. And unlocking um, actually opens up that ability. So you simply select the run button. I've already run out uh, several reports in lieu of time. So I, I want to first of all show you the demonstration report designer. Now I'm showing you this because this really demonstrates and gives you ideas of what you can do with your financial reports. Because I know with some applications, it's, it's kind, of a, kind of limited. But that's the purpose for Sage Intelligence. Using Microsoft Excel, you can um, create exactly what you need. Let me, this is the task pane over here. I'm just moving around to show you that it is something that's within Microsoft Excel. You can click on any of these layouts or just use the layouts that we have here. And you notice there's these um, parameters I mentioned earlier. Let's say, for example, you use additional uh, currency. I want to change this to US. I would change the currency as well as the currency type and notice the numbers have changed. So now dynamically, I can look at my opening balance, my quarters, uh, my current month and my over here is um, my year to date. Oops, sorry. <laughs> and I can look at it by all, both or all of the currencies that I have available. I've pushed all the currencies into uh, all of that data into these sheets so it can dynamically change and we've set it up. If And notice the grouping. I don't have a lot of uh, information on my US. My, let me change this so it gets some more data. There we go. So now I can look at the grouping or, or the uh, information that supports all of those higher levels. So I can look at everything opening the group either at the same time clicking on two or going back and clicking on one and it goes back to my initial uh, view. Again, you can change any of this and even start from scratch and uh, modify it. We've created a, a summary by account. Of course, we've already seen the income statement. There's that year over year and the variance there. Um, income statement, including the adjustments and this is, there's your by your period and your year to date, periods up to 14 even. Trial balance, there's that cash flow and cash flow detail, and the divisional. I'm kind of clicking through this quickly, but what I want you to do is I want you to run these uh, reports out and, and take a look at what you really can do um, 
uh, with this system once you get your, uh, if you have your um, report designer um, purchased and, and activated. So again, if I look at over here on the right, the task pane, there's my layouts. And if I were to create from scratch, I would drag in my list. I would then drag in my formula, set my formulas up, and I would have my trees ready to go so I can drag in my, my tree information and uh, watch the details change. Now, um, let me go ahead and move on to some additional reports that I have open. I wanted to make sure to show you this flash report, and I'll show you that with this flash report, uh, you can change that daily sales information. So if you want to choose the date by which you want to see any of the changes, these values will change. And what and the the rest of the information, your state sales, customer sales, sales rep contributions all change, of course, according to the information that you have within your within your business. And we do provide additional information with this. You can go in and take a look at, we, we provide you all of the formulas, everything's um, open and, and you can see, you can reverse engineer how we've created all of these reports. Uh, it's amazing how many things I've learned just by looking at some of the development with each of our reports. But what I wanna show you within this report, as is all reports, are the additional tabs that we have available. Not only do we have the dashboard, but this is where we're creating the dashboard from some of these uh, additional tables that we have. We have, um, uh, sorry, this I didn't uh, save the information with this. We have a, the ability to filter by state, all kinds of different ways of filtering. We've created these using um, Microsoft Excel version 2013. So it's not, you know, it's an older version at this point. So hopefully you're on 2013, but this is where you can use these slicers to easily filter any of your data, both for your report, your dashboard. And of course, these are all uh, um, open tabs that I've saved. And this is how we create our dashboard is first of all, we create these very simple, easy charts. Um, using pivot tables. See how our pivot table tools is open. So I just wanted to demonstrate how the report we've already built that you can use right out of the box. But if you want to make any changes, you can by just looking at some of these um, additional tabs of data, how we've done it. We, we even have um, additional videos to show you how to create some of these dashboards. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, let's move on. Uh, here's a liquidity ratio report. So this is a great report. It's a report, again, you can download from our website. It's a report utility report. So it uh, shows you month over month uh, your liquidity. Let me get to, I'm trying to scroll over here. All right, for some reason it was stuck. I have, I can go from year, from year to year. I can choose the ratio type and I can modify anything about uh, these reports. And again, I have, uh, like my sales flash report before, it, for that report, I had uh, unhidden, if you will, some of the uh, sheets. And notice you can unhide any of the sheets within these reports, all of these reports, to look at your data. And, and that means that you might be able to use additional sheets that are hidden to create additional charts or graphics, all of what you might want to see um, yourself. So it, there's really, you know, the sky's the limit in a lot of these, in a lot of cases with these reports using Microsoft Excel, because we're pushing the information to Excel for you so that you can use it and see the information you, you need to see to make your decisions. This is just one of the reports that are standard top five customers, but we have top five products, top five salespeople, where we have uh, charts, we have graphics, and you can pull them all together into one report. Here's that sales master. What I wanted to demonstrate here, let me just make this a little bit bigger, is 
you, you notice our pivot table tools at the top, click into them and you can go in and you can view your field list. So you can see additional fields that if you wanna add these fields, you can very easily. But I wanna make sure that you uh, know or remove them, remove any of these, change the color, uh, add a logo, change the title, whatever you need to do. But I also want to say that if you don't see a field in here, maybe you wanna add one of your user-defined fields. That's something that can be done. Acumen can help you with this and can add it to this report and saved and every time you run this report out from report manager you'll see that new field i wanted to show this one it's a power view report power view is a, a feature right within microsoft excel it's something that you can use very, very easily. We have information and videos on how to create uh, a Power View report. But as you can see, um, you know, it's very visual. It's very colorful. It's very interactive. You can just click around on each of them, on uh, each of the filters. It'll change all of the different tabs. It's take mine. Um, I'm not sure if you see this, but it's taken a while to to. Uh, paint the picture here. I think it's because I have quite a bit open, maybe, or maybe it's because we're going through um, a webcast. But it, you can see your information via a map. Again, these are what we have created. You can make changes to any of these reports and create them the way you need to see them. And then finally, I wanted to dig into the financial ratio report here, where we, you can choose a, a different parameter. So for example, a different year. And um, the, a lot of this is because I've, I've opened these from a, a, a desktop. But these are uh, different periods that I can choose. So I have not only the dashboard, but I have the financial ratio report here. Again, that's the one that I showed in the presentation. But here's your ratio trends. So we have information in, in 2019 and 2020 with a variance and a benchmark. So these are all the ratios. Um, this is the data and the ratios that we've built. You can set those ratios up, however, the way you need to set them up. So know that you have, um, you know, control of this. You can see which ones we're using, what uh, calculations that we're using, so we have everything defined. All right. Okay, um, I haven't left very many minutes to uh, four questions, but I will do um, just show you one more thing, and that is sageintelligence.com where uh, you can go for additional information. Go to start to our learning portal and choose 300 and get more information there. And I'll go ahead, sorry, um, there's a couple minutes for questions. Thanks very much, Sandra. And, and uh, you know, I'll just add that we use the Sage Intelligence uh, you know, training and, and um, all the time here and find good documentation, good samples, good, you know, tips and tricks. And, uh, you know, it's a, a really good place to start. Uh, um, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Please remember, um, go ahead and put your question in the chat. We're, we're watching that and uh, we'll just go ahead and read them out as they come in. So first one, Sandra, is do people have to have Sage software to be able to see the reports? Uh, if you mean um, if you mean Sage 300, yes, um, you need uh, Sage 300. Uh, you would need to activate the report manager, which you get one license free. And from there, you can run one of the standard reports. So for example, maybe a purchasing report and you'll see your data. That is if you use, if you use the modules with 300, you'd need to use, uh, you know, have data in there, of course, but you just run the report and you can see that information. But yeah, it must be Sage 300 and must be Sage Intelligence Report Manager activated. Uh, but you could also export a report, right? Or distribute a report to someone that didn't have Sage 300. They could view it, but they wouldn't be able to drill down. Is that correct? That's exactly right. I apologize. I, I 
that's exactly right. So if someone does not have SAGE intelligence, you would email them the report. And that's exactly right that they cannot drill down in that case. They would need SAGE intelligence installed. Uh, 300, of course, um, set securities up for that person uh, with report viewer to run the report and drill down that you can email it outside of um, you know somebody that does not have 300 installed yes a question how can we get access to the user manual Oh, very easy. Go into uh, go to this site. It was sageintelligence.com. I went to the learning channel, and um, this is our learning channel. Sorry, the the learning page for 300. Click on documents. It's taking a while. And here's the uh, there's a getting started guide too. But here's the report designer user guide. Click on that, and it'll down. You can download it and save it to your system, or look at it online. Okay. Uh, question, we already have Sage Intelligence. When I download a report, will it go directly to my report manager? Oh, if you're referring to the um, report utility, yes, this happened, let me close. Well, this happens to be the report utility that I've downloaded the, the little executable to my desktop. I just click on that and it opens up this new window that's retrieving our reports from our website. You can see some of the ones that I've already downloaded here and some that I haven't. And you can see all the reports available. And yes, when you select, I, I would select, um, I'm always afraid of, because I did that once, <laughs> started downloading all of them. Uh, you know, just click on uh, any report that you want, click on download, and it's going to go right to this folder here. And here's all of my. Uh, report utility reports that I've downloaded. You can delete them if you want, re-download them again later, but it will create, the first time you download the first report, it's going to create this folder and put it in right into your report manager. I'll show you where, as we're thinking of questions here, I'll show you how to get to um, report utility information. I'm going back, as you can see, I go back, back, back to sageintelligence.com, main page, I go to resources, okay, and you see right at the top, additional reports, and I just click on that, and it has, scroll down, you'll have to choose 300, sorry, it's taking a little bit here, it's weaving through everything on my <laughs> desktop. And here's where you can download the, the, the little executable, but you could also go in and download from here and just look at uh, what reports there are, get a little quick view of them and description of them. So um, this is your cash accounts dashboard. That probably would have been a good one to show you too. But there's uh, all kinds of cash management um, all kinds of additional dashboards, sales reports. Let me just click on your sales. We even have a place for your standard reports. If anything happens to them, you can come back and get the standard reports. There's your forecasting, et cetera. Oh, sorry. Any other questions? Yes, there's a question about um, entity parameters. Can Sage use entities that inherit subsidiary data? And uh, uh, I know where this one's coming from. So Sandra, uh, the answer to that is, is yes. Um, it does require customization, uh, but Gabe, we, we, that's something that you have um, already in your um, environment and uh, Scott or Lisa can help you find that. But, uh, yes, we can include multiple entities uh, or, or one kind of primary that's pulling from multiple entities. Uh, but it does require customization in that case. That was a good question. Thanks. 
Um, yes, we have some very technical users on, on the call. <laughs> awesome. Do you have to be in the report manager or do you have to be the report manager to download from the report utility? Um, no, you can either uh, go right to the report utility and download from there, or you can use that little executable. So, um, so for example, in the 300 here, there, here's where you can download this, ex just the executable itself. So you can download it and it shows up as this little icon here. And uh, you just, it's Sage Intelligence Report Utility. And you just double click, double click on it. <laughs> and it opens up and you can download it from here and it goes right, and the report goes right to your, your report manager. Okay, any other questions? I don't see any more coming in. I'll give it just a few more minutes here. Well, while people are thinking, go to the learning portal here. And not only can you see the documents, well, I'll go to 300. Not only will you see uh, documents, but there's, uh, of course, how-to videos. And we have um, a, a huge list of uh, short and long. Um, we have the short videos and long webcasts. So, um, and the webcast is quite extensive. That gets into a, a, you know, a lot more specific things of how to you know, create and recreate reports and make changes and so forth. But here's where we get started with the very fundamentals. But at the very bottom, if there's someone who's pretty new to um, accounting, if you have someone maybe you want to train on, um, let's see, where is it? Where's our Sally series? Um, if you have someone that wants to train or learn more, I'm sorry, I thought it was in here. It's our Sally series that helps you understand. Here it is, starting out with Sally. Not only does it show you uh, how to use Sage Intelligence and, and Excel and all of that to create balance sheets and income state, all of your financials, but it also explains how and why it's built that way. So if you have someone maybe within your company you want to hand it over to, <laughs> you can help them get started as well. Do we think of some more questions? I don't see any more that have come in. So I think okay. uh, I'll go ahead and uh, wrap it up. And, and certainly if there are any questions that come out uh, after this, uh, please feel free to reach out to any of us on the account management team or any of your consultants here at Acumen. We're happy to help and we can always reach Sandra if it's uh, you know, something that we can't answer for you for some reason. but. Uh, just want to say thank you very much, Sandra, for a great presentation. Uh, and thanks, of course, everyone for attending. You know, we do appreciate you uh, taking the time and hope this is valuable for you. And, and you know, we welcome any feedback uh, on this. Uh, so thanks again. Have a great day, everyone. And uh, stay tuned for the next webinar Wednesday in two weeks. Thank you very much. Bye now. Bye-bye.